The British authorities feared that their soldiers might be frequenting male brothels in Karachi. Burton was sent in undercover to spy on them. Karachi supported no less than three bordels in which not women but boys and eunuchs lay for hire. After several visits, his involved descriptions of sexual acts with boys and eunuchs begged a bigger question. How much had Burton tried himself? Eunuchs, or hijras, are still very much around today. At the time of the Mughal Empire, they were highly revered as guardians of the royal harems. But in the days of the Raj, their fluid sexuality simply horrified the British. Burton, non-judgmental as ever, found them fascinating. Despite their best attempts, the British Raj failed to outlaw hijras completely in India. But today, they have lost their social status, and hundreds of thousands of them live at the margins of society. Reduced to begging and prostitution, they live in tight-knit communities. Gori, a chief hijra, and her family have agreed to let me into theirs. You're Gauri? Yes. And, and you are the guru? I'm the guru. Mm -hmm. They all are my chelas. Your students? Yeah. See, biologically you are male, since yeah. you are having a two bodies. Right. You are having a male personality, like this. Mm -hmm. Inside, female was there. Mm -hmm. So, hey, kya kar rahe re? Like this I can say. Hello, mm. you. <laughs> are you bartan do ke kana bana re? So, right. the leadership quality, my voice is to make everyone silent and all. Right. The hijra was having empower in their hand. The slowly, slowly, British Empire cut them everything. Mm. So he was on the street. No occupation, no, the gender identity was not there. We didn't get a job or anything. So begging was there and sex worker was there. Do you think I'm beautiful? That I think you're can... too beautiful. I don't oh, think my, any my, husband my, could my, stand my, up to you. <laughs> Which in my previously photo, I used to look very macho. Mm. I was just having beard like you. Really? Really? Uh, really? What you have now. Too. He's flirting with me now. So have you had, <laughs> have you had um, uh, laser? Laser. That? I have oh, done laser. Once mm. you castrate it, so your male hormones goes down. Mm -hmm. I see. So now these four girls, do they still have their cocks? Dicks? All of them? Three of them. So at present they are having the beard and all everything. Right. So the mental pressure is there on them. Mm -hmm. That you have to go for this, you have to go there. Otherwise other hijras will tease her. Hey, you are a man, you are a man and you are just wearing a sari. You will go and fuck a woman. So having sex with women is very shy for us. Right, very bad. Yes, mm. we are not a man to mm. have sex with. Then what is use of this having you, Dick? Tell me. For me? Oh, I, I mean, we it. will ask if I, she oh. don't see if she decided I don't want to go for castration. Right. I will say, do you want to fuck up with me? Mm. Then yeah. every she might community. Want to fuck a man. That is okay for us. Right. That is okay for for earning money. She, but with female, no. no. We are the female. We are not a lesbians. Right. We are not a lesbian. Right. She is having a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. But after castration and all, once she become a guru and chela, now automatically she will leave the relation. When is her castration scheduled for? Next month. Mm -hmm. They will take you in a forest. Mm -hmm. You have to just stand naked only. Mm -hmm. They will give you water to drink. Water? Water. Okay? Three, two, three bottles you have to drink. Your, one, your tummy will come out. You have to just stand and they will just cut it. Without anesthetic? Without anesthesia, without doctor. Mm -hmm. After 40 days, you will look like a female. This jawline they will become soft, your skin will become soft, they, this body will become soft. The final job of the day for two of the girls who still have their cocks, because that way they make more money, is a spot of soliciting at a nearby beach. No wonder Burton rebelled against his fellow Victorians. He didn't judge people who were different. He tried to understand them. It made him a pioneer and a permanent outsider. Although Gori and her crew seem pretty upbeat, as these two crash through the undergrowth, you can see a whole culture destroyed. Once revered, now the Hydras live on money they make from blowjobs in the bushes.
When the details of Burton's report about the boy and eunuch brothels came to light in 1846, his reputation was tarnished forever. Already an outsider, now dogged by rumors of homosexuality, his army career stalled. But his thirst for knowledge and for sexual adventure was still happily unquenched. Richard Burton is one of history's great outsiders. After seven years in India, his zeal for the natives and their sensuous culture had ruined his reputation, with his superiors at least. Stricken with cholera and in disgrace, he was sent to Goa on sick leave. Disappointed though he was, I think it was also liberating. Traveling through uncharted territory, one can lose oneself. One can't be found. The man wants to wander, and he must do so, or he shall die. Burton claims to have found his next sexual adventure in the unlikely location of this convent of Santa Monica. Thank you very much. Tiara brooch, clip, clip, and in we go. May I speak with the Mother Superior, please? Thank you. Mother Superior, I feel like uh, Julie Andrews in The Sound of Music. <laughs> My favorite movie. We're in Goa because we're making a documentary about um, an English explorer from the 19th century called Richard Burton. Mm -hmm. And he was a bit of a ne'er-do-well. Mm -hmm. And he came to this convent mm -hmm. uh, one day and fell in love oh. with a nun <laughs> <laughs> who taught Latin. <laughs> and um, he became obsessed by her. Mm -hmm. And so he had a very naughty servant called oh. uh, Mohammed mm. and the two of them mm. decided to kidnap mm -hmm. the nun and uh, they were going to take her away in a boat and he was going to get married to her. So the night they broke into the convent, this mm -hmm. convent, in mm -hmm. 18, I think, 45 and they had a huge like blanket mm -hmm. and they threw the blanket over oh her gosh. and carried her off oh. and they got out of the convent and they got back down to the waterfront and he very excitedly began to unwrap the blanket to have his first kiss yeah. and who should he find but Mother Superior! Oh! <laughs> it's nice to see you with a beautiful rosary around your neck. Yes, it's made of black pearls yeah. as well. Yeah, eh? <laughs> Which is very it's nice. We are happy that you are having that. Well, you will be until I try and carry you off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four. How do you solve a problem like Maria? How do you catch a cloud and pin it down? Whatever I like to say, she listens to what I say. I'd like to say a word on her behalf. Maria makes me laugh. <laughs> I always long to do that with some nuns. <laughs> By now, Burton had excommunicated himself from British society. Hungry for experience, he moved beyond Hinduism to embrace Sufism. Sufis see themselves as the mystical branch of Islam. He later claimed that he became a master Sufi. Sufism is about detaching yourself from the world. An interesting fit for our restless wanderer. Sufi expert, Dr. Engineer, is my guide. Well, a Sufi denies pleasure. Um, obviously, sex is pleasure. How does that all work out with um, having a family and um, having a sexual life? You see, uh, for example, you ask me whether Sufi is married, mm. uh, and it involves pleasure. So, yes, pleasure. <laughs> but they are like uh, uh, flies of sugar cube. Mm -hmm. not flies of honey. Mm -hmm. A fly of honey gets stuck into it. Mm -hmm. Whereas a fly sitting over sugar cube just <coughs> tests the sweetness, yet flies away. Right. It doesn't get stuck. Mm 